Magandang araw po sa kanilang lahat. Uh, kumusta kayo riyan? Narito ulit tayo para sa isa pang kabanata ng kultura, siling at iba pa, isang programa ng TVUP. Ngayong araw po, ang ating kabanata ay tungkol sa contemporary Philippine fiction. Our topic today is contemporary Philippine fiction and we have with us a very distinguished panel of some of the most exciting fictionists in Philippine literature today. Mga manunulat po sila ng, ng fiction sa Pilipino at sa Ingles. At sa, kasama ko po sa uh, uh, kabanatang ito, of course, ang aking co-host, yeah. ang Makata at Profesor na si Neil Garcia. Yeah, magandang araw at uh, magandang araw sa ating mga panauhin. Uh, sisimulan natin ang lahat sa papakilala, papakilala sa, uh, sa ating mga guests. Uh, this time, I've asked them to introduce themselves. So Amula we begin kay, with uh, uh, Luna. Uh, Mike Luna. Ako po si Luna Sikatleto. Um, madalas ako ipakilala bilang anak ni na Rogelio Sikat at Ellen Sikat. Pero ngayon, gusto ko ipakilala ang sarili ko bilang sarili ko. Uh, ako po ay nagsusulat ng nobela, uh, mga dula at mga sanaysay. At nagtuturo ka rin. No? Nagtuturo rin po ako sa malikaing pagsulat sa Departamento ng Filipino at Panitikan. Okay. Si Nikki naman. Hi, I'm Nikki Alfar. I write speculative fiction in English. Uh, the rest of the time, I do marketing and corporate copywriting, which means I write fiction all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and we go Thank you, Nikki. Uh, Dean, the other Alfar. Hello, I'm the other Alfar. I'm <laughs> Dean Francis Alfar. I'm also a writer of speculative fiction. I have uh, several uh, short story collections, a novel, and a book for children. And Nikki and I are also editors. We put out anthologies every year. And, and you run an, uh, their own business. A, 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 your own business, right? Oh, yes. And uh, I run a couple of businesses. Uh, one of them is a design agency. So, yes, that is what puts food on the table. <laughs> My name is Gabriella Lee. Uh, I teach at the Department of English and Comparative Literature. Um, I also write stories for children, young adults, and also speculative fiction in English. And newly married to another writer. And well. yeah, <laughs> and I just got married Congrats. a few <laughs> months ago. Thank you. Okay. Magandang araw. Ako po si Vlad Gonzalez. Uh, guro ako sa Departamento ng Filipino. Kasama ko si Ma'am Luna. Nagsusulat ako ng sanaysay, mga kwento sa Filipino. Tapos ito mga nakaraang taon, nagsusulatin ako ng dula, saka nagsasali ng dula. At nagtuturo rin sa UP. Ayun, tuturo ko ng kulturang popular at panitikan sa departamento namin. Sa kuleyo ng arte at literatura. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat. Maraming okay. salamat sa inyong lahat. Ang una nating tanong ay uh, relevant and pertinent to your introduction. Uh, particularly for the Alfars who introduced themselves as writers of speculative fiction. And the others who didn't quite identify the, genre, the mode that they write in. Uh, the first question is, do you identify as a realist or a speculative writer? And what are the implications of that identification in regard to the elements of fiction that you work in? Character, oh. setting, plot, etc. Tsaka bago nyo detalyin lahat yan, pakikwento na rin kung bakit... Asama ba nyo na yung kwento. Ba yeah. Bakit pumasok kayo sa fiction? Bakit uh -oh. hindi poetry, drama? Ano ba ang particular na appeal, a challenge ng fiction? Yes. Sige, confession time. Sige. Nung una ako uh, natuto magsulat, Ang naging training ko ay sa dula, okay. sa, sa, sa playwriting. Yeah, you were a speech. Yes, okay. I was a speech, speech and, and, and drama major. major. So, ang nagturo sa akin si Wilfredo Maria Guerrero, oh, si wow. Freddy Guerrero. Oh. And uh, I, I fell in love with the one-act play, that, okay. that form. Okay. But, apart from that, napaka-avid and voracious reader ko. Tapos kahit nung bata pa lang, ang paborito ko na mga fantasy, science mm. fiction, horror, mm. yun talaga. Tapos napansin ko, growing up, na wala masyadong mga fantasy books right. na authored by Filipinos. Mm. So, parang nag, at a certain point, nang, nangako ko sa sarili ko na someday, susulat din ako ng, ng ganon. Mm. Tapos, nung medyo tumandatan na na ako, nakita ko na may parang movement sa mundo na nangyayari. Ang tawag nila speculative fiction. So, okay. speculative fiction is an umbrella term that mm. we use to describe writings uh, that are uh, under the genres of fantasy, horror, science fiction, interstitial fiction, weird fiction, yung mga wala. Nung unang, nung start... So, non-realist sila lahat? Oo. Oh, oh. okay. The easiest way noon is to 
define them as non-realist. Pero ang pangit naman ng definition ng using a negative. Yes, yes. So, ginamit namin yung umbrella term na yan. Tapos, nag-start ako, nag-start ako magsulat ng ganyang uri ng mga kwento. Nag, nagpapas ako ng submissions uh, abroad at natatanggap naman sila mm -hmm. at napapublish siya. So sabi ko, kung kaya ko, dapat kaya nating lahat. Kasi, okay. di ba? So, nagsimula kami ni Nikki noong 2005 um, ng Philippine Speculative Fiction, anthology siya. Mm -hmm. Nag-call for submissions kami, open sa buong Pilipinas at kung sino mang Pilipino, kung saan dako man ng mundo. And we were pleasantly surprised because we got over 200 entries in volume one. Palang. Okay. Right now, we are on our uh, 11th volume. We have had a best of courtesy of UP Press. And ang dami daming mga young writers na dito sila pumapasok. Uh, ito ang ginagamit nilang stepping stone towards literature. Kasi napapansin nila na may mga constraints kasi yung realism. Uh, one of the dictums kasi na they tell me is we have to write what you know. It has to be true. It has to be real. Yung ganyan. With speculative fiction, they think na hindi ganon. They think na you can just be imaginative. But later they also realize that it still needs to be anchored in truth. And that's a beautiful epiphany as, yeah. as they grow as writers. Kasi all fiction actually is speculative. Yeah. That's, that's the truth of it. So yun. That's salamat. Right. So salamat. that's a good summary. So in, uh, speculative fiction has meant both a commitment to, to truth, but also uh, the flight mm -hmm. away from, from truth, from the real. Yeah, because really reward dito yung imagination ng mga young writers. Mm -hmm. A lot of young people, they feel constrained by uh, what they are taught, and gusto nilang umabot sa ibang planeta, sa ibang world, sa ibang future or what. But they also realize as they start writing, they start growing. Then they realize na hindi mo pwedeng ikaila ang pagka-Filipino mo, ang pagka-concern mo sa pagkatao at sa nation mo, kahit na imaginary world pa yung sinusulat mo. Okay, let, let's hold uh, that to that, that great that's, idea, yeah, Dean. Yeah, let's and, hold on to that. And move on to uh, Gabby no, here. I, that question actually applies to all of them. Let's yeah, ask. but let's not get stuck on spec fic yeah. muna because not everybody here probably does that. So let's just ask them how they got into fiction okay, first. Okay, okay. Okay, so I, I started writing, um, I was actually a poetry major when I started um, my uh, education here especially. Uh, I'm a creative writing graduate here in UP. Um, I actually had the privilege of having Sir Neil and Sir Butch as my teachers Undergrad. in poetry and fiction. Um, but I wrote primarily poetry. Uh, so fiction to me was kind of like a playground. I didn't have, I didn't have to take it as seriously because I thought that I would be writing poetry for um, a very long time, and that was the serious genre. And so, um, fiction was my playground kind okay. of thing. Um, and then I also started writing realist fiction. Um, but two things happened. One was I started working for Dean um, in my early 20s. Um, and he was the one who told me you should submit to the first um, Philippine Speculative Fiction Anthology, which I did, and it turned out that I enjoyed writing speculative fiction okay. more than any other um, types of fiction. And so that was most of what I was doing uh, in my early writing career. Um, however, now as a teacher, I find the value in um, both realist and speculative fiction genres, particularly in teaching um, students how to write fiction, any type of fiction. And I feel that that was what I, uh, yung, uh, as Kine Quentin ni Dean earlier in the learning curve, so to speak, was something that I actually traversed. Okay. Um, uh. And I came to the same, or to a similar conclusion, which is that all fiction is speculative. Right. It really right. depends now on the concerns mm -hmm. of the writer and how they deploy those concerns using any type of fictional constraint, whether it is realist or speculative. I think the idea is that it is always based on the craft or the process of mm -hmm. your writing. And that is where, I think to a certain extent, uh, teaching and learning about writing um, is most valuable. Because mm -hmm. there's a form of guidance which I received when I was a student and now I'm hoping that I am imparting to my students. Okay. Ikaw naman, Vlad. 
Um, medyo kamukha din sa kailan. Uh, mas nakakapitin ako sa sinabi ni Gabi na ang um, pagkukwento ay laro. Mm-hmm. Lalo na sa umpisa. Kasabay ito nung uh, mga unang karanasan ko sa pagdodrawing. Uh, mm-hmm. Nagdodrawing ako ng mga continuation ng episodes ng cartoons na natatapos na. Mm-hmm. Um, Nagkumagawa ako ng mga dagdag na drawing dun sa mga bedtime story na pinamana sa akin. Mm-hmm. Mula sa mga second hand na libro. Nung mga tita ko. Kailan ka ba pinanganak? Ako ay 82. So, 1982 ako. Big E.D. Medyo uh, ilang dekada na nakaraan. Uh, oh. Tatlo, tatlong dekada. At nung 80s, uso sa amin yung pinapasahan kami ng mga Jack and the Beanstalk. Mga okay. usual na picture books. Uh, ginugupit ko pa nga siya kasi gumagawa ako ng collage. Kasi oh. mas may fascination ako dun sa mag invento ako ng dagdag na oh. story. Uh. So I guess yung summary nung umpisa ng aking pagkukwento ay interesado talaga dun sa yung idea ng yung mag-invento ng bagong mundo. Ano yung mga kasunod. Kaya nga eventually, nung nagkuleyo ko, nagkaroon ako interest sa fan fiction. Mm. May existing narratives, mag um, Medyo journalism yung focus namin noong high school. At kaya rin pumunta ako sa pagkukwento. Kasi Saka parang sa may St. Anthony, sa Novaliche, sa mm. Kanookan. Parang pag-rebelde ko yun dun sa fact-based, oh. um, walang masyadong imagination puno okay. dun sa sa journalism, at least yun ganun siya noong high school. Yung bawal oh. daw maglaro, bawal mag-invento. Sa storytelling o fiction ako na naakit dahil daw kasi pwede pala maglaro, pwede mag-invento. Eventually, nung nagkolehiyo, nagbalik ka yung pagsulat kasi ako sa, oh. sa UP Diliman, doon na pumasok yung element ng responsibilidad mo sa likunan. Naging guro ko si na John Cruz Reyes, Eli oh. Kiev, uh, si Ma'am Luna, eventually naging guro ko rin, nakalipat ako. At sa department namin, lagi may emphasis sa hindi ka lang realism, may social realism. Social realism. Oh, oh, oh. At may pressure sa amin na kahit anong gagawin namin kwento, may, may pagsasaboses sa mga nasasagilid. Oh. At sa umpisa ng aking writing process ng kaleyo, lagi kong dala yun na minsan parang bagay, minsan hindi. Hmm. At gaya nga nung nabangit Ladin at ni Gabi, eventually natuto rin ako na pwede pala maglaro na yung content mo ay pupuna sa mga um, usapin sa lipunan na tingin ko ay mahalaga, na, mm-hmm. na negotiables. Pero pwede palang maglaro sa yun nga, fan fiction o oh, uh, minsan fantasy. Okay. Um, napansin ko na yung body of work ko na gagawa ay may tendency mag-focus sa may pagka-realistiko pero yung absurdong elemento ng mga oh. realistikong pangyayari. At may pagkiling din ako, nag-gravitate ako sa mga nakakatawa. Uh, sa sobrang absurdo nakakatawang mga elemento sa pagkakwento. Okay. So, ayun, parang sa aking practice, parang may non-negotiables na siguro mamaya ako na mababahagi sige, na sige. mga paksa. Pero pwede rin maglaro dun sa ano, ibang mga ano um, Sa treatment. Sa treatment. Oh, um, oh, oh. Hindi bawal magpatawa, hindi bawal magpantasya. Uh, konting science fiction, uh, baka mamaya papag-usapan natin yung sa sige. Pilipino paano ginagawa. Oh, oh. Um, pero yun nga, laging tingin ko ang pagkakwento ay experimentation. So, minsan may mintis. Minsan may okay. At yeah. yun yung susubukan kong i-embody hanggang sa kasalukuyan sa aking storytelling. Okay. Maraming salamat. Uh, kay Luna na tayo. Ako naman. Journey into fiction. Paano ba? Uh, play, uh, play Playwright, playwright ako ka, eh. Na nagsimula, mm, di ba? Simula. Um, Oo. Tapos paliwanag ko lang kung bakit ko nagustuhan ng dula tapos paano ako nakapun- napunta sa pagkakwento. Sige nga. Uh, nung, nung kolehiyo ako, I was a journ student. Oh. And I remember Louis Beltran asking us to write leads Oh. on the board. Tapos, baliw na baliw ako dun sa process kasi dapat nagsistick ka dun sa what what are the facts. Yes. What, when, where, so, how, when. Hirap na hirap ako yeah. nun. Tapos, sab- sabi ko, parang hindi para, parang uh-huh. hindi ako para dito sa journ. So, nag-shift ako, napunta ako sa film. Naghahanap ako ng, ng isang area na kung saan pwedeng magsalita ang mga tao. Mahilig akong makinig sa mga conversations nun. Hindi ako masyadong nagsasalita. So, Uh, sa mga lumang ano ko journals ko noon, ang <laughs> statement ko ng mga araw ay mga conversations. Eventually, naging puhunan ko sa pagsusulat ng fiction kung ano yung sharp ang memory ko sa conversations. Eh. So, uh, natuklasan ko early on na ang, na ang paglikha ng dialogue ay napaka-useful sa maraming mga genres ng, ng panitikan. Uh, hindi lang sa sa dula, hindi lang sa kwento, pwede mo rin siyang ma-apply kahit sa tula. Mm-hmm. So, uh, tingin ko, yun yung extra na mm-hmm. skill na nataglay ko bilang isang fictionist. Tungkol naman dun sa pagtatawid ng kung anong totoo at hindi, 
Mm. Uh, nagkaroon ako ng konting problema dyan nung, uh, when I was starting out. Realism. Yes, uh. kasi nasa realist school ako. Mm. Pero eventually, na, na-negotiate ko rin na uh, lalo na after... Uh, Meron ka mga non-realist story? Yung lohi ka ng bula oh, ng sabon. Oo, non-realist yun. yun. Uh-huh. Nagmumula talaga siya sa isang real na pakiramdam at uh-huh. sa real yeah. na experience. Mm. Pero uh, ginamit ko lang na analogy or lunsaran Metaphor. yung, yeah. yung uh, soap bubble making. <laughs> <laughs> um, nasa na nga ba ako? <laughs> Um, Journey. When, when I write, um, kasi parang napaka-structure din mag-isip ng mga ibang kasamahan ko dito eh. Uh, ako magpapakatotoo ako in, in saying na every day is a, is a struggle for me when it comes to writing. Kasi yung uh, parang may pagbabalance eh, ng mga imbalances that I see around me. So, uh, yun yung actually uh, sea ball or spring ng, ng aking art kung paano ko nababalanse yung mga bagay na yun. And yung mga bagay na yun ba ay, ay makasining lang or yung galing din sa buhay marami. mo? Marami. Galing sa buhay, galing sa balita, galing sa mga nangyayari sa ibang tao hmm. na, na parang ako lang yung vessel o yung medium ng kanilang mga kwento na matagal yung process na yun eh kung paano ko siya na natanggap. <laughs> na uh, hindi, hindi ko to kwento lagi na kwento to ng marami pang tao. Nung, nung natutunan ko na uh, maaari rin yung gwi na yon ay collective, kasi iba ang gwi ng, ng nasa Ingles sa uh, atin ng sa Filipino. Parang, parang pagka nagsusulat ka sa Ingles na we parang mas may license ka na maging lyrical and such. Pero pag ginamit mo yan sa, sa Filipino, Tayo. parang may uh, bagahi yon na responsibilidad na nagsasalita ka para sa maraming tao. Hindi lang siya simpleng mm. lyrical na strategy. Okay. That's very interesting. interesting. Kasi uh, uh, magkaiba ang, pag, ang appreciation mo ng we uh-huh. in English and we in Filipino. Yun yung yeah. uh-huh. Kasi may we collective, may inclusive at exclusive we tayo, no? Mm-hmm. Alright. So, uh, now, Nikki. I think I write fiction really because I, I am secretly an intensely private person. Mm-hmm. So I feel That's like... It's a paradox. I know, right? It doesn't <laughs> seem like it, but secretly I am. In fact, my being here is me stepping out of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I lack the raw emotional honesty for mm-hmm. fiction. Or I mean for poetry or creative nonfiction. In fiction, I can explore what I think or what I've experienced, what other people have experienced without needing to reveal myself quite so much. Well, what so was life like before fiction? How or, did you, how did you or outside of fiction? What, do you, what else do you do? I attempted poetry. Oh, oh, let's not revisit <laughs> that bush. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I, I, I can be accused of but, attempts but, but at poetry. But were you an English major? Begin uh, with? CW. CW? Yes. Okay. With us, no? In the English yes. department. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, kind of a shadow in the halls because oh. when I finished high school, I, I went through that experience I think a lot of people go through. You go through high school oh. and there are two or three writers in your high school so you think you're brilliant. Okay. And then you come to college and everybody's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of in hiding for a long time and eventually, but this was in my 30s, I found fiction. Oh as a way to express myself without quite exposing myself. Uh, was this on your own or did you have to go I through Dean? I was already married to Dean. Okay. And uh. I was writing, but he bugged me to get it published because I would have just, you know, hidden it in my okay. drawer. Okay. So yeah, intensely private, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. In fact... And I think we identify with that. Fiction allows you to wear masks. Right. Or mm. To ventriloquize. Yes. And you don't have to reveal who you are too much. Right. Yes. Right. Reveals just as much a as I'm comfortable with. A little bit Okay. That's interesting. So you are a speculative fiction writer as yes. well. And wh- what, what's the uh, attraction of that label for you? I'd like to say that it's something like intellectual and well thought out, but it really is the way my mind works. Very playful, right? I was writing this. I decided to write a story about a friend's divorce. It's like I'm going to explore the emotional connotations and all of that. And it just would not work. And then I finally decided the way this will work is with a zombie. <laughs> 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 and it worked. Okay. It worked. Oh, okay. 
Oh, very interesting. Uh, thank you for all your, uh, your little stories. Um, I think we can go uh, into other areas and uh, ask other kinds of questions. Uh, I'm quite interested in your assessment of the state of Philippine contemporary fiction. Mm. Um, what are its weaknesses? What are its strengths? Where is it and where is it going? Where should it go? So this actually, this question uh, requires you to sort of reveal just how well read you are in and terms no, of our yeah. fiction. And also in relation to our neighbors. Uh, yes, and there. also regionally, globally. How, how, what do you think, how are we faring in that regard? Uh, Nick and I actually have uh, <coughs> fairly good insight into this because every year we put out a call for submissions for okay. Philippine mm. speculative fiction for all writers that, who are interested in submitting. In addition, I usually have two or three anthology projects per year outside of that. Mm. Uh, for example, with Sarge La Cuesta, I have Maximum Volume, mm. yeah. which is for any kind of writing, not necessarily speculative fiction, by writers 45 years old and under, because mm. we want to encourage the, the, mm. young, the younger ones. Uh, with Kenneth Yu, I have with UP Press, uh, Fantasy Science. for Young Adults. Yeah. So, Why? iba din yung audience non. And then um, I recently co-edited a Southeast Asian anthology called Trash, mm. okay, published in Malaysia. But we got submissions, I got submissions from all over Southeast Asia. Mm. So as a matter of course, I tend to read hundreds of short stories mm. a year, mostly mm. from the Philippines. But when I have an international anthology, I, I see things. A lot of it is speculative fiction, but I also see realist fiction. So I'm here to report that it is not dying, it is not moribund, mm -hmm. that ex what ex is the it? exagger the short story form. Yeah. Okay. There was a time I actually bought into that. I thought it was moribund. I thought it was dead or I dying. Think it's the novel that's in trouble. Yeah. It's the novel that's yes. in trouble. But we'll get into that okay. later. But short stories, you have to get a stick to stop people from Writing. submitting, <laughs> okay? The badly written ones. But the beautiful things, wow. Nikki and I are my co-editors from They're time to time. They're still relatively rare. I've judged in the Palanca oh. several times. We will story. get a short story from Cebu or from some place in Mindanao, like Davao or Lanao. Tapos, it's startling. And it's from, ang favorite talaga namin, guys, yung hindi namin kilala mm -hmm. na author. A new author, a young, fresh perspective, mm. Nick and I will get into a wrestling match arguments over do we penalize this person for grammar, but I can see why mm. the cadence is, is like that. So generally speaking, speculative fiction is doing a lot to help in the production and creation and uh, mm. uh, in inspiring younger people. So what people do you attribute around. this, this uh, phenomenon? Why are there so many specific writers now? The younger generations who came after mine are mostly digital natives now. So they know the internet. They are open to the porousness of culture. They are exposed to writing from so many nations, from so many authors. They can communicate to their favorite authors on Facebook. They can join uh, threads and reddits and fora on, on fan fiction and submit. There's Wattpad. The traditional mm. gateways have mm. collapsed and fallen. You can get published now on Amazon uh, mm. by yourself as an ebook. So people are feeling freer, and so expression is coming out. Now, it's a question about quality, but that's a mm. different discussion okay. altogether. I'll, I'll ask you in a minute about popular themes, but I confirm that Luna and Vlad are going to be in the Philippines. Is there a link to the Filipino? Boy, na boy, na man. Oh, sige, ikaw muna pala. Well, sa kalasan ko, um, may proyekto kami sa Sento ng Wikang Filipino noong nakaraang taon oh. na antolohiya na literary anthology. Mm -hmm. At tinangka namin mga lekto ng mga kwento na parang yun nga, magiging statement siya sa ano ba ang katayuan ng ano, pagkakwento sa katula dahil magkahalo siya sa pan na ito. Ang pangkalatang impression talaga, maraming interesado mag magbigay sa mga antolohiya at tingin ko boy na buhay yung pag antologize sa mga kwento. Um, bukod doon, may likhaan tayo. Um, tapos, um, ang, ang aktibo sa ganyan, si Dr. Romel Rodriguez, Nolan Tolentino, 
uh, napansin ko nung manakaraang mga hanggang sampung taon niya yata, lagi silang nagtatakda ng mga antolohiya na may iba't ibang tema at palaging buhay yung pagsusumite. At ang, ang, ang nagiging issue na nga lang ay paano ka magtatakda ng quality control kasi doon kayo magtatalo eh. Tama yung sabi ni Dean kanina na... So, tanongin natin yung, 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 yung kanyang yardstick. Uh, 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 yung patnugutan kasi usually, siyempre sa karasan natin, academic-based. Uh, totoo na may mga lunsara na ng mga kwento na hindi sa akademya nagmumula. So, may Wattpad writers tayo, may vloggers tayo. At habang may pinahihintulutan minsan na makalusot, minsan may, may ilang tataas yung kilay kasi ay, may certain na amount ng kalidad na para sa ilang mga reviewer, kasi hindi lang naman editors yun ang angasiwa niya, hindi pa katanggap-tanggap. So yun pa yung isang, uh, masasabi ko pinoproseso ko pa kasi minsan may okay sa akin, minsan hindi okay sa iba, at kailangan tanggapin. Pero sa usapin ng excitement ng mga tao na makapagkwento, buhay naman, buhay naman, at least nga para sa maikling kwento. Uh, hindi ako sigurado sa novela kung gaano ka katindi excited buhay ng mga tao magbasa. Um, at magbigay, um, bagaman may mga nakikita. Um, uh, sa mga palihan, meron sa palihan sa departamento at sa mga workshop na lalokan ko, very enthusiastic sila na ano, uh, magpayag ng kwento. Um, oh, yes, at yung last na lang siguro, bago ipasa kay Ma'am Luna, uh, of course may mga kaibigan tayo na may interest sa independent publishing at maraming lumalabas doon. So yung mga kaibigan natin sa BLTX, uh, sa Los Baños, meron silang uh, parang ganong proyekto, Elbicon na mga self-publish na mga collection ng mga kwento na may mga kahalo ng comics at iba pang mga klase ng sini Pero yun nga, may, may community na nag exist at maganda rin tignan ko ano yung naman mga komunidad na ito. Oh. Uh, Luna, makukonfirm yan. At saan sa nagmumula itong mga bagong manunulat na yan? Sari-sari po yung pinagmumulan nila eh. Um, kung minsan university-based authors to. Oh. Uh, may grassroots, merong mga freelance, oh. uh, ang gusto ko lang susugan yung sinasabi ni Vlad na quality control. Kasi um, hindi ko alam kung ganito rin sa pag, uh, pag-devote ng time para sa pag-form ng isang anthology sa Ingles. Uh, sa amin kasi, pinababalik namin yung kwento. Kuminsan ang response din nung sumulat ay, bakit ko pa siya uulitin? Parang uh, <laughs> sa kanila, sapat ng ilinabas nila yung draft. Kung kaya, meron din akong susog na uh, ang lakas ng oral tradition din sa, sa pagsusulat sa Filipino na pag uh, inayos mo, mm. nagkakaroon kayo ng kaunting debate dun sa bakit mo pa inayos upang maging mas mm. literary. Uh, tapos, tingin ko rin dapat talaga mas aktibo ang ugnayan or relationship ng mga practitioners na nasa akademya doon sa mga nagsusulat ng maikling kwento para lang doon sa pagpupulido ng, ng mga styles at saka ng mga uh, publishable traits na dapat taglay ng isang kwento. Kasi uncompromising din dapat ang stand ng, ng isang editor pagdating doon sa quality ng isang kwento. Hindi pwede yung parang pinaamulang. Kailangan meron talaga siyang laman. At kuminsan, debate rin yan nung ano eh, Uh, ang ganda-ganda nung laman, mm. yung buhay na buhay, galing talaga sa danas. Pero ang problema, yung execution, kung pa, yung technique kung paano siya ginawa, kadalasan rin pumapalya sa paraan ng pagre-resolve ng isang, ng isang storya. Parang, uh, parang sapat na ibinuntong hininga, kumbaga, pero hindi siya pinulido para maging mas subtle o mas ironic o mas uh, matalino ang ang pagkakabigkis ng kwento. Hindi okay. sa hindi sa aking pinupulaan ang mga nagsusulat sa Filipino dahil uh, marami naman silang mga kalakasan din pagdating sa material at hindi rin ito parang panlalahat sa kanila dahil meron din naman talaga sa kanila na sibol talaga yung kanilang mga teknik at saka yung vision. Yeah, but, but speaking of material, uh, Nikki, maybe you can, you can answer this since you've been co-editing uh, th- these volumes. Uh, what are people writing about? I mean, given that specific or even realism is just a mode, basically, what's the what material? Are the topics? What are the topics and how are they handling these? Well, the interesting thing in terms of the anthology, Philippine Speculative yes. Fiction, is we've seen when we started, it was very 
very young and, and kind of baby. You uh, know, everyone was talking about love okay. and finding who they are and where All they right. belong. And now they're, they're getting into, I guess, more grown-up themes as maybe the... the, the They've also grown up. <laughs> they've grown up, or oh. the movement, as people have called it, has grown up. Oh. So they're, they're now, we're now getting a little bit of politics in okay. there. Some th we have a lot of dystopias now. A lot of dystopias oh. now. <laughs> yeah, ever since the man, yeah. Seeing too many dystopias. But I think probably... Se sexuality is, uh, figures there? Yes. Oh. yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Every year there's yes. some little bit about sexuality, although growing oh. more. Okay. And identity politics, yeah. right? And it's clear. Lately, there's been more of a thing I've tried to... I guess the world going wild. Oh, yeah. In in globalization. In speculative yeah. fiction ways, so you can see that they're reflecting things that are happening in the oh. real world, but it tends to come out as storms or alien invasions. Okay. So it's yeah. it's, I guess it's a response to the way they change and the way the world changes us. Okay. Yes. Can can we hear from Gabby? Because yes. Gabby oh. will have a lot to say about this, being a teacher of speculative fiction. Okay. Uh, I, I'd like to actually extend that discussion on dystopia because um, I recently uh, had a number of students uh, from the creative writing program at least uh, attempt to do it in various ways. And okay, define muna ng dystopia para okay. sa mga viewers natin. All right, so dystopias are is a subgenre of science fiction or social science fiction, oh. um, actually, uh, where basically the negative things that are happening in the world are actually extended to its furthest um, parang possibility. So oh. think of, for instance, The Hunger Games, okay. where it actually talks about class distinctions, for instance, oh. but it's played out in a very extended right. and almost absurd way where you just have yun nga, the capital and then the districts, for instance. Um, so here we have, I, I've had a lot of young students who uh, who talk about their exposure to, for instance, speculative fiction oh. um, and also to young adult speculative fiction in particular because these were the things they read in high school. And so coming into college, this is the thing that they knew. Okay. Um, and so when they try to do it their way, uh, it starts off as mimicking mm. before you tell them, okay, so maybe why don't you tell it within your perspective or within your point of view, your own mm. experiences. And that's when it becomes more interesting, I think, because that's when they start finding their voice. Um, but I do agree with what was mentioned earlier that um, there has been more attempts, A, with the short story than with the novel. Mm. Um, and I think one of the things that um, we aren't particularly used to is the time needed to write a novel. Mm. Um, because, at least coming from an academic point of view, because mm. we teach in semesters, we can only guide the project within a certain right, time right. period. And so it's easier to deal with a short story. Um, because it's cyclical. Sige, so, do, do tayo sa short uh, story. Kasi gusto ko rin itanong kay, kay Vlad. Uh, ito bang, uh, speaking of themes, uh, they're talking about dystopias, future worlds, uh, science fiction, sci-fi. Sci Paano ito na ma-manifest sa, sa, sa Filipino? Kasi uh -huh. ang, ang, ang madalas pag iniisip ng mga, ng mga tao, pagka sumusulat ka sa Filipino, napaka-traditional na mga tema mo, tungkol sa pagsasaka, paggawa, yung mga ganyan ba? Maybe the, Pero, the question is, may sci-fi ba sa Filipino? Oh, at, 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 at ano, paano, anong pinagkaiba nito? Ano yung mga mm. katangian niya bilang sci-fi sa, sa mm. Filipino? Um, may mga proyekto na gaya nung katangian si Papay Pangalala. Um, basta sila Sir Roland at Sir Romel Rodriguez, may anthology na oh, oh. hindi pala binabrand bilang science fiction eh. Um, napansin ko na, well, sa pangkalahatan, may pagtataka talaga i-appropriate yung uh, mga approach sa, oh, oh. sa mga pagsulat ng speculative fiction sa English. Pero, nung sa mga nabasa, kanimbawa may isang kwento si Norman Wilwaiko na ang branding dapat ay science fiction. Pero mas parang absurdist fiction na mm. may anchor pa ng social realism. So, mm. tingin ko yun siguro yung isang challenge para doon sa mga susulat sa Filipino na may um, may minsan may hindi matakas ang anchor dun sa ano eh, social realist na so hindi na. necessarily futuristic yung kanilang oh, uh, but, uh, kasi most treatment. of sci-fi is actually a global imagination and a global citizenship yes, uh, already niya, kung kahit na may, may element, yes. na, may element then, ng future daw yeah. or, or, pero parang nasaan ta siya ng metaphor oh, nasaan yes, ta siya yes. ng ano 
uh, oh. na hindi hindi pa ma- ma-execute yung uh, yung commitment doon sa sa ginagamit na ng dystopia o futuristic elements may konti pa fantasy medyo nitatagumpay kasi si Egay Samar mm. may novels pa nga kasi siya kasi mythology natin puro um, fantasy mm. naman yun um, tapos um, in, sa mga anthology definitely may trend na pagbalik sa hindi man lagi sa nakaraan pero dun sa inya yung mga balon ng kung hindi mythology yung mga kwentong bayan oh, yeah. may fascination yung ating writers dun sa ito yung ngayon ano tayo dati uh, at least dun sa anthology na kolekta namin last time. Tapos yung sa iba, mahirap kasing itakta dahil ang editor si nagtatakta ng team. So yung napansin ko sa amin uh, sa Pilipino. So ba may call ngayon na uh, fiction na uh, anti-fiction. So, so dapat yung ipapasa mo, somehow tumutugod no, kung ano yung pag-unawa mo. Ano yung anti-fiction na yan? Uh, basta nakalagay doon, anything na non-linear. So uh, kung tingin mo, well, non-linear, non-linear siya. Anti-fiction is actually fiction Oh. that is not so contrived and does not have the unities of traditional fiction. It approaches mm-hmm. creative non-fiction. Oh. Well, it eh, has a looseness uh, okay. to it. Uh, yung yeah. isang etology na naloka, naloka namin ay ang pamagat niya, wagi isawi. So may team naman na uh, tagumpay at, ano, at heartbreak mm-hmm. naman. So, minsan umaayon ka rin sa kanoon. Meron din tahong-talong. Tahong-talong, oo. Oh, yun oh. ito ay uh, homoerotic uh, stories. Oh. Laglag panty, oh. laglag brief. <laughs> Uh, Tahong talong, lesbian and gay stories. Yeah. At ang interesting doon ay uh, sabi nung aming editor, Bumibenta ba yung mga tahong talong? Yun nga, ang interesting doon ay sa loob ng 5 years yata or 3 years, ang bumenta ay 15 kopya. <laughs> so, Para hindi ko lang kung paano. Uh, hindi ko lang kung packaging o promotions. Uh, di ba kasi... Hindi, nabasa ko rin kasi yung tahong talong. Medyo seryoso eh. Yun din eh. Um, ang ina- dapat, if we have a title like Tahong Talong, dapat yung the treatment should be a little light. Yes, yeah, yeah, so... Oh. so Oh, it sounds fun eh. May may oh. something sa Filipino na ano eh, na yun yung may pagkaseryoso. Marugdob masyado. Um, kailangan bakahin. <laughs> Siguro yun, yun yung pinakamagaan na term. Dagdagan ko yung ano paliwanag ni Vlad. May yung sa sapantaha, paano ba namin dinadala yung science fiction or dystopian element? I remember this story written by Lawrence uh, na ang ang premise niya ay uh, may mga sick leaves pa rin, pero ang, ang tao ay ka, parang nawala na ang kaluluwa eh. Basta trabaho lang ng trabaho, hindi na nag-absent. Yung pathological na yung pagkakaroon ng sakit. So doon nagmamanifest, hindi mo siya nakikita sa mga gadgets, sa mga space age na developments, nakikita mo siyang nagmamanifest in the everyday. Mm-hmm. Yung isa ring outstanding story doon ay... Uh, tungkol naman sa pagtubo ng hasang or gills sa sa no, katawan ng isang uh, babae na madalas lumusong sa dagat uh, para hanapin ang kanya o makipagniig dun sa patay na alaala ng kanyang anak na nalunod. So, ang, ang gusto kong sabihin ay regardless kung merong dystopian element yan or fantasy element, umiiral pa rin yung kahingian ng isang mahusay na kwento. So dapat, it must work as a short story mm-hmm. first yeah. before that uh, yung mga elements na dystopia ba yan o fantasy ba yan, ganun ang naging standard namin. Ngayon, tungkol naman dun sa pagiging non-linear nito, may mga nag attempt doon at ang mga mahusay sa larangan na yan ay sina Alvin Yapan, oh, na Alan oh, Derain, kasi na, nahasa na sila o napaghusay na nila yung metafictive na imahinasyon eh. Mm-hmm na siyempre ang kwento ay hindi lang kwento na sasabihin mo lang kung ano nangyari. <coughs> Kasama doon yung pagdidiskurso ng lahat. Uh-oh. At uh, si, si Yapan ay epektibo bilang uh, writer ng, ng mga dystopian stories kasi doon sa kanyang apokalipsis, um, talinghaga yung pagkakaroon ng mga uh, anak na hayop ng, mga, ng tatlong babae na bida nung, nung maikling kwentong yun. Parang ang sinasabi, Sa darating na panahon o kinabukasan, ang mga hayop na ito ang higit na may makatao kesa sa mga uh, babaeng namatay. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, Nikki and, 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 I think very clear na yung attempts at speculative fiction in Filipino mm. ay uh, uh, very strong in social content pa rin. Mm. At they're using the speculative mode in order to uh, uh, be given a metaphorical license okay. to actually transform these social comments into 
uh, analogies, okay. right? Yes, yes. So I think, the, so you know, parang kalakasan. I think that's the strength of, of speculative fiction in Filipino. Hindi siya nawawala ng rootedness. Oh, but naka, uh, naka, naka, yung hinahanap oh. natin, in the end, even good speculative fiction has to be true. It's there. Yes, but there's also true, which is rooted in your national identity, your country. But there's also the true that is part of being a citizen of the world. Uh, th that's what I'd that's like to the, ask you that's about. That's the different uh, thing. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, in your experience, as both, both as a writer and an editor who's engaged with publishers out there, uh, what are the strong, what are the elements of Philippine spec fic stories that kind of sell best outside? What's I don't our think, edge? I don't necessarily mean sell commercially, pero ano yung mga nakikita nila sa mga pagsusulat natin na gustong gusto ng mga publishers sa labas? First of all, on a very basic level, mm -hmm. our English. Okay. The quality of our language, how we write, and it goes beyond grammar. It's, mm -hmm. it's in the lyricism, it's the tone, because when you submit a story to a market abroad, mm -hmm. kailangan maakit mo yung editor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Diba? And these editors, they have read hundreds if yes, not thousands yes. of stories and you are in competition on a global stage with writers from everywhere right and you are not submitting to some thematic thing ang kala ang magsasubmit ka for for the atlantic or or whatever kind of market that is and then uh the things that they like are things that are uniquely filipino or have the filipino impression or or, or the spin of that so it can be anything, Butch. It's hard to, to tag. Sometimes it's the Manananggal, for example. Oh, nga, That's fascinating to them. Oh. If it's a, a creature of the night or some supernatural thing okay. that, that we own and we can write about. Because we lang yung may visera na kalahati. Oh, oh, oh. Malaysia has the penanggalan yung yeah. neck. Ulo-ulo lang siya. Oh. Oh, Tapos tayo lang yung may kwento. Nagyan mo ng asin at kung ano mangyari dyan. Yeah, Maraming no. bagay pa rin yung mga... Philippine yung lower, cultural mi element. Yung lower mythology natin, no? it's oh. very fascinating. Oh, I remember oh, Neil oh. Gaiman saying yes. mm. that he had he, he came here was fascinated. He came here and then he said, if you're not gonna use I your will. own myth, I will. Oh, so <laughs> appropriate niya. Oh. Yung, yung niya, he has never seen a richer yes. lower mythology. Like so meron tayo sa, sa arsenal natin uh, lower mythology. Meron mm. tayo niya. Tapos meron din tayo pagdating naman sa realistic touches. Oh. Okay. Our, our OFW experience, our migrant workers, okay? And all of these things, they resonate. They are not necessarily strictly the Filipino experience. But through the lens of the Filipino experience, when these things are expressed, they reach that universal status so that they are appreciated and consumed by readers abroad. But the important thing is how we delivered it. Yeah. So yung, yung pagka-Filipino, which is also hard to pin down, ha? Oh. Kasi we are, ako, I, I write exclusively in English. Mm -hmm. Kasi I, I have a hard time in Filipino. But when I ask my editors na abroad who bought my stories, why? Oh, because there's something Filipino about it. There, there's mm -hmm. something different about it. You know, but yeah. when I do a line by line, it's English, right? Oh. Oh. So because you're translating, even if you are writing in English, it's no, just so efficient in your mind that I'm you don't see it anymore. I'm not translating. My my mother language is English. Was that when your I mother write, tongue? Yes, my, when that's my growing mother, up, that was yes, your mother tongue. Yes, so but you acquired the mother tongue here, so it's your it's the English in the Philippines that you acquired. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, it's, it's English in the Philippines as it. Well, so that that's already a variety of English. Yes, but it's not Filipino. So I am not uh, translating I when I write from no, I think, a Filipino uh, what word. What makes what makes a language fil uh, what makes English Filip what makes Philippine English Philippine is that it's situated in the Philippines. So if you acquire this language here, mm -hmm. yeah, like watching, let's say about. watching Sesame mm -hmm. Street in the middle of your living room while you were being bitten by mosquitoes, that whole memory, that whole experience is part of that language. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But there are also standards of English that if you wish to compete and submit abroad, you better know your Chicago Manual of Style. You better know the standards going out there. You can't just rely on your idiosyncratic Filipino English, right? So those things are important when you want to submit or be published abroad. Over here, as editors, kami ni Nikki, uh, natutuwa kami that there is also differences in how English is deployed. And that is one of the things that we were negotiating kasi Nikki is 
a fantastic editor. And one of her traits is perfection. There has to be this kind of standard, like Luna was saying. But I'm more of the school na pwedeng hindi. Preserve the voice. Mm. Kasi there's a tonality. Mm -hmm. and, and there's, mm. diba? Which so I agree with. That. Because my stand really is your voice, my standard. It has to come up to a certain level of quality. But that doesn't mean we're eradicating your intelligibility. voice. Intelligibility. <laughs> intelligibility, very much so. <laughs> yeah. Just to add, kasi our annuals, our anthologies, they are also geared for international consumption. So we But I think we you don't really should want try to, to preserve to, some of, of we do, that. We do, we do, we do. Actually, some of that idiosyncrasy we do. because that is part of the selling point, exactly. right? Of this fiction. Without In exoticizing fact, our yes. own. One of the editing things we do is we say, please don't footnote your Filipino words. Yeah. Just leave okay. it. Yes. Yeah. You <laughs> ask them to italicize them. No. No. Let's, no talk, about, let's talk about another, another big issue here, which is that uh, the observation that, that I've also made that we don't write enough novels. Yes. No, I mean, we're, we're very good sprinters, we're awful marathoners. Why is that? And, and this is yeah. true not just for a spectator or anything. It's and the, the few novels that are churned out, mm -hmm. are, are, there's not enough blood between the boards. Or they're... Oh, medyo payat. Payat. Manipis, payat. Bakit kaya ganun? Kulang. Sa Pilipino ba, marami pa rin nabilis na, di ba? Ah, meron na. Mas marami, mas marami. Kesa sa English, ano? Marami rin ho. Norman Will Wycombe, oh, oh, oh. Alvin Yapa. Si RM. Oh, RM. Uh, si RM, makapal sumulat ng novela oh, yun. Ito yung novela oh. nun. Oo, oh, oh, pero ang, ang typical na length po na napapansin ko, mga 200 to 50. To 50 pages. Oh, no? Parang bihirang-bihira yung 350 above. Uh, tingin ko may kinalaman ho yung ano, parang sprinter ba yung term nyo? Oh. At hindi marathon. Dun sa... Unang-una, para makapagsulat ka rin, kailangan ay may steady source of income ka. Yes. Na, <laughs> na, <laughs> diba, it helps a lot. Eh. At kapag nagnonobela ka, may tendency na sa practice ko, na it consumes a lot of your thinking time and thinking space. So, kung wala ka nung um, paraan, mga kaparaanan para mabalansin mo yon, mahirapan ka talagang matapos yon much less yung makapal-kapal. Uh, pero pwede nyo rin sabihin na ang mga Russo, uh, yung mga sina Tolstoy, hindi ba pag nagpo-proyekto sila, talagang makakapal eh. At saka, Ay, wala epic. Wala naman ibang ginagawa. Wala naman ba? silang ibang ginagawa oh, eh. At required oh. yata na makapal eh. Sa panahon natin yan, daming kakumpitensya ng panahon eh. At saka yung, mm -hmm. It's also the attention kung babayaran, rin, kung babasahin ba o... Hindi, pero other countries don't seem to have a problem with that. Bakit tayo, no? Uh, I think that the novel form in general is probably a little more alien to our sensibility than the short form. Tingin ko may, may kinalaman dun sa nasanay ng serialized nung panahon din. Yon, yon. Sa, sa liwayway tradition, halimbawa. Nagsiserialize sila rin eh. Tapos... Uh -huh nag siya after a certain point kasi nga kailangan yung yung plot mo ay uh, dagdag ng dagdag eh ng 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 plot doon kabanata oh uh, ang hirap noon at saka yung yung uh, plot mo nang parang pasangasang eh pagka hindi nababantayan yung yung takbo niya dahil nga mm -hmm. nakasalalay siya doon sa bumenta ba yung serialized structure niya uh, hindi rin nakakatulong na Ang dami nating mga diversions in terms of yung worlding sa TV, uh, yeah, competition. Sa, sa, sa short film, uh, sa pelikula, sa ti yun lang po sa tingin ko. Uh, nabanggit mo yung mga economic factor. Uh, Doon sa aming panels, uh, art um, uh, and, and painters, pinag-usapan naman yung art as a business and a profession. Can, you live, can we live off our writing now? Pwede na ba? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> Which is why all of us have some sort of day job. Day job, yeah. yes. And that also <laughs> is the answer to the novel question. Yes. Frankly, walang benefit magsulat ng novela. Mm -hmm. Wala. Kakainin niya yung oras mo, then you need to go through the process of getting it published. Mm -hmm. Sa Pilipinas, bestseller ka na ng 1,000 units. W wala talaga. So you would rather spend that time on doing something else. Kung creative ang gusto mong gawin, 
hindi ko sinasabing mas madali magsulat ng short story kasi mahirap din siya. Mm. Pero certainly, makakalabas ka ng ilang short story yes. dapat in the time that you write the novel. So, <coughs> I was going to say a similar thing. Because in other countries, there's a chance, however slim, that you'll write a novel and if it's a huge hit, yes. that will feed you for the rest of your life. Right. But that's not true here. Okay. So but it could be true now, no? They're looking, you have these agents looking for a very good non-Western novel, you know? And it's the novel that they look for, not any other of form. Yes, but and I so think there is the a chance global is slimmer, slimmer. That it the chance just seems to be so much slimmer yeah. as opposed to the instant, the nearly instant gratification of, I've written a short story, people can read it now. <laughs> but if we're saying people are not really writing novels in English, I think that we're kind of limiting to Filipinos in the Philippines mm. because in the States and in England, yeah, you do have people writing novels yes. like Candy right. Gurley. Yes, <laughs> yes. Especially like in Wyatt. Merlinda Bobbis is writing. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. I was going to ask about Wyatt. Um, actually, the number of Filipino novel, Filipino or Philippine-born novelists that I know are actually, most of them are either published abroad or are living abroad and are writing YA. For instance, Rin Chupeco, Kate Evangelista, um, mm. Candy Gourley. Yes, they're yeah. all writing YA and they're all writing outside of the Philippines. Uh, Melissa de la Cruz, uh, who is Phil Am. Um, and they're thick, right? Yeah, and they're proper <laughs> novels. And then they turn out maybe one or two a year. <laughs> because they don't, uh -oh, they don't have the baggage of the Philippine, uh, yun nga, uh, what I think um, Vlad and Mam Luna was saying earlier, the idea that um, you, you are speaking for the voice of many. For them, it's their voice. It's their individual voice. Um, they're writing for a very specific audience, which is young adult. So they're very aware that they are attracting a young adult audience. Um, and whether they're writing in realist uh, or speculative modes, for instance, Kate Evangelista writes realist love stories, um, whereas Rin Chupeca writes um, horror. Uh, and they both borrow freely from Philippine traditions, but also from very Western traditions. Mm, yeah. Like Rin writes Japanese horror stories, okay. but she's Filipino. Um, Kate Evangelista writes love stories um, and she writes, she places them in France, mm. in Rome, mm. in London, but she's Filipina, she's based here. Yeah. Um, and so these are people who write novels to a very specific audience with a very specific point of view that's not necessarily Filipino or Philippine yeah. based. A more global yeah. point of view. Yeah. 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 Global perspective, because mm -hmm. these guys, these wonderful authors, just to, to, to put it bluntly. Do they bluntly, write well? I think yes, they're pulp they, fiction writers. They aren't write they? well. And we met, we met, Nikki and I met uh, Candy yeah. Gourlay in, in San Francisco. Ang ganda ng mga libro niya. So, hindi sila part of our system na, let's mm. face it guys, we still have this distinction of the literary versus the non-literary. We were still there. At a certain point, we just need to write and mm. get over ourselves. Na ito yung hinahanap natin na ganyan. Mm. It's so limiting eh. Or maybe situate this, this uh, uh, paucity in our novel uh, within the bigger picture of the fact that we are seeing so many telenovelas. They're novels, they're serialized, but they're, they're not literary. They're like audiovisual, they're uh, uh, television uh, soap operas, right? And that's going mean, to be... Are, what would be the prospect of our fiction crossing over to multimedia forms, like cinema and uh, television, etc.? And maybe that's a way to actually solve some of the readership or audience problem that we're seeing. Pretty good. You know why? Because our oral tradition is all about abangan ang susunod na kabanata. Which brings me to the point, what is the next kabanata going to be? Because we're wrapping up, so yeah. I'm going to ask you, uh, isa-isa sa inyo, what lies ahead? Uh, you can also answer that in terms of what is your next project going to be? Anong, nice. anong sinusulat mo ngayon? <laughs> And try to insert a bit oh. on that prospect of what I need. Oh, where are you going? Where Philippine fiction? Oh, who is the first one? Even whatever order. Who is the first one? Okay, Vlad. I don't know the exact answer, but it's interesting to say that the whole fiction production is what we've seen in the system of the system of patronage. Mm -hmm. sa bansa natin sa kasaybang bansa na mm -hmm. maraming discussion pero yung future din ng fiction sa Pilipino halimbawa ay 
nakasalalay sa paano mo siya itatranslate sa English o sa ibang oh, bika oh. na maraming complications at the very least. Mm. Um, pero yun nga, right. pag ako halimbawa gusto magsulat sa Pilipino, um, may mawawala talaga doon sa market ko. Um, at kailangan akong dumipende sa ano yung magiging kinabukasan ng translation culture sa bansa natin para Totoo. doon. Uh, samantala sa English, maganda yung point ni Dean na, na kahit English siya, may hinahanap at interesting na Nga, kahit na hindi Filipino orientation, parang Filipino nest ang hinahanap. Okay. Uh, at maganda observahan yun. Um, yung pangalawa na baka sumasagot sa, mm. sa tanong ninyo, interesting pa sa akin na may ilang writers ng fiction na yun yan, nagko-crossover. Uh, natanda ko si Carla Vergara na comic mm. book mm. artist. Uh, theater din siya, tapos nag-story writing mm. siya. Nag-venture into comics, nag-venture siya sa play. Okay. Uh, at yun din yung in-explore ko sa sariling practice ngayon na mula sa pagkakwento, naging essay na may, of course, may narrative approaches pa rin. Um, pero ngayon, nagsulat ng dula. At yun nga, yung, kasi yung idea na natanda ko sa sinabi ni Carlo Vergara eh, yun nga, bukod sa just write, parang just tell the story kung saan platform mo tingin at mukhang viable ngayon sa kasalukuyan yung pag-explore ng outlets na matawid mo yung kwento mo. Yun nga, iba't ibang platforms. Um, basta nasa core mo pa rin na may gusto ka itawid na kwento, at yun nga, may non-negotiable advocacies ka na natutunan mo sa kung saan ang background ka nang galing. Uh, yun siguro yung, yung core ng iyong storytelling at kung saan ang platform man yan mapunta, eh, di, ituloy lang. Saka yun, wag tumigil at maging bukas dun sa pagbabasa ng mga bagong lumalabas kasi marami talagang bago. Okay. Sige, salamat. Uh, Gabi, anong abangan natin sa iyo? Two things, I think, uh, is where we're going. Um, and also my personal okay. um, interest. Number one is obviously young adult fiction. I think this is mm -hmm. a, a massive untapped market here okay. in the Philippines. More and more young people are getting into the habit of reading. Mm -hmm. And these novels, these stories become a gateway to them, um, mm -hmm. to exploring more um, complex literary uh, either books or poems. Okay. Um, and that I think for them, these are the audience that we should be trying um, to encourage to read more Filipino works. Right. Um, so that's one. The other thing is because um, of the internet, uh, whether for good or for ill, it actually provides a very effective platform to promote mm -hmm. and to publish and also to play around with the actual form okay. of fiction. Um, you have things like uh, you can now code your own fiction. You can do a choose your own adventure on your mm -hmm. own. Um, yeah, na fiction. There's a lot of things to explore, and that's actually what I'm looking forward to. Okay. Yeah. Ding. Sa akin, syempre, yung speculative fiction. Yan pa din yung akin siya champion. Mm -hmm. Ang nais ko kasi mangyari down the line is magkaroon na din ng uh, Filipino language edition ng Philippine speculative fiction mm -hmm. na hindi translation. Okay. As in, talagang Originally written in Filipino. Oh, 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 you oh, may oh. not be the best editor for that. Hindi nga talaga. Doon pa namin pinag-uusapan niya ni Luna na hin alam kong hindi ako at ako'y mag-give ng full support ko sa tao uh, niya. Give to Luna. Luna can... Oh, oh. Well, they already have Katang Sapantaha. Haka. Okay, mga ganyan. Okay. No, there's a book now called Sapantaha which is what speculative is in Filipino. Okay. Well, that's... It's with UP Press. <laughs> okay. Finish up, finish up. Okay. So, just to, to touch on the, the YA, I think this will be one of the saviors of our writing. Mm -hmm. Tandaan nyo ha, nasanay tayo ng magsulat ng short story. So, after a while, comfortable na tayo dyan. Kaya hirap tayo magsulat ng novela kasi long form. The thought of the novelistic space par nakakatakot. Oh. The more young people who read YA novels mm -hmm. and produce that, mas masasanay sila na yun yung novella length. Ito na yung, okay. ito yung tama. So ang hope ko is down the line, because of YA, kasi tumatanda din itong mga young people, pwede na din sila magsulat ng ito. But it right. does mean giving up on the so-called great Filipino novel. Okay. Tama na yun. S salamat. Salamat din. Uh, uh, sige, Luna. Pagkatapos si Nikki. Um, Nikki hindi natin up. dapat kalimutan ang papel ng mga guro, mga pamilya, dun sa pag, um, pagkalabit sa mga kabataan para magbasa ng magbasa. Kasi sulat nga tayo ng sulat kung wala naman nagbabasa, hindi ba? At tingin ko uh, malaking kinalaman ng ano eh, tamang pagtuturo eh. Kasi kung uh, maswerte ako, nagkaroon ako ng mga mahuhusay na guro. Luisa Maliay for one. Nung nasa kolehiyo ako, naging teacher ko siya at uh, na-appreciate ko yung kung paano niya pinaliwanag yung Cry, Thy Beloved Country. Uh, na talagang inisa-isa niya yon Nakita ko yung novelistic 
imagination doon nung ano, Alan Patton, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So, kailangan ng mga ganong guro eh. At um, kung minsan bilang writer, nakakalimutan din natin yung interstices ng space na shared natin sa mga mambabasa, sa guro, paaralan, gobyerno. Ma magkakasama yan lahat na uh, kung hindi natin sila consider magiging lone voice talaga tayo na shouting in the wilderness tungkol dun sa the great Filipino novel. And one more thing, tingin ko lang din, sir, um, wala rin yan sa haba o iksi, kundi dun sa laman. Laman nung sinulat. Kung, kung ano yung koneksyon ng laman na yon sa kalooban nung nagbabasa. Kung paano siya uh, mababago or kahit kung paano siya mapapaisip nito. Doon, kahit doon lang sa level na ito. All right. Nikki, you get the last word. Ah, uh, I'm not sure it's the last word you want because I'm very happy to say I don't know what comes next. Okay, good. As, as an editor of speculative fiction, I have the privilege of seeing many new writers all the mm -hmm. time. And I don't just mean young, but like people who are economists or, yes. or you know, from all flight attendants, all walks right. of life. So I see different perspectives and I see how it, evolves yes. the form yes. so i'm just excitedly watching the evolution and eager to see what really comes next great how wonderful <laughs> well i just personally i think that the future of philippine fiction is not as text but rather as cinema or as an uh, audiovisual but it will still require <laughs> writing <laughs> there will still be some scripts somewhere there but there will be scripturality but there will be because i think also our students are becoming less literate in the traditional sense and more literate in the audiovisual sense. Please invite me to your next show on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we have a next show on cinema and we will invite you. All right, thank and, you very and, much. Yes. On that note, we can wrap up. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll just say as we close out that uh, there will always be old guys like me who will continue writing as we've always written. But the important thing is that the writing gets done. At uh, dito po tayo magpapasalamat sa ating uh, napakagaling uh, na mga panelista ngayong hapon. Si Luna, si Nikki, si Dean, si Gabby at si Vlad. Uh, sana po ibasahin ninyo ang kanilang mga akda. Uh, maraming salamat po at uh, sa susunod na kabanata ng uh, kultura, sining, sining at, at iba pa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>